Africa now that last October's neo-Nazi attack on a busload of black people was forgotten within a day or two. Seven dead, 27 wounded, when a group of young Afrikaners opened fire on the easiest black target they could find. Eugene Marer was one of the killers. Smiling in court but judged sane and given seven death sentences today, of his victims, Marer said, I saw them as being a busload of animals, animals that looked like people. Marer said he was inspired to kill by Eugene Tablanche, leader of the Africana resistance movement. He was speaking again in Durban this week, touring the country regularly, his racist oratory poisoning the minds of thousands. But the far right are not the only ones making South Africa one of the most violent societies in the world. The killing rate among black people in the township civil war is running so high that South Africans are increasingly fearful what sort of society a future black government will inherit. In Easter sermons, Archbishop Desmond Tutu is asking, what is happening to us as a people? Apartheid has a great deal to answer for, but cannot be an alibi forever. It seems as if the culture of violence is taking root in our society. We are becoming brutalized and almost anesthetized to accept what is totally unacceptable. South Africa's murder figures are shocking. 15,000 dead last year. That's a murder rate per head of population five times higher than in the United States, 35 times higher than in Britain. Guns are everywhere and fear is breeding fear. Here, right-wingers train to kill, calling it self-defense. But among black and white, self-defense is often an excuse for deliberate, calculated murder. James Robbins, BBC News, Johannesburg. The foreign segregated and hasn't. protected animals and animal products. That trade is profitable. At an estimated two and a half billion pounds a year, it's second in illegal international commerce only to drug trafficking. The Worldwide Fund for Nature says the situation is intolerable and a violation of the international agreement on trade in endangered species to which Thailand is a party. The main problem is they have no legislation to stop the import of any non-Thai species. So whether it be caiman skins from Latin America, ivory from Africa, rare orchids from Southeast Asia, or uh, birds from all over the world, they can pour into Thailand with no control. Uh, what is needed perhaps is the uh, certain law and certain more strict uh, enforcement you know, to check uh, all these goods which originated from other countries to Thailand. Meanwhile, on the market stalls at Chattuchak are not only the horns and animal organs wrongly but highly valued as aphrodisiacs for consumption in Asia. Tigers are sold to be killed for their blood, their eyes and their genitals, all of which are believed to confer the animal's prowess and vigor on humans. Increasingly rare pangolins are sent for their meat to restaurants. And young gibbons from Cambodia are mutilated to silence them and make their export from Bangkok easier. It is, says WWF, a market of misery.